First of all, I think it's amazing that you're making a Maleficent movie. I have been waiting for this day. <laughs> She's always been my favorite villain. Yeah. And why did you decide, like, how did you, why did you decide to get involved? Why did you decide to do this? Well, because Maleficent is everybody's favorite villain. She's this amazing, kind of beautiful, glamorous, mysterious character with horns. I mean, where does she come from? And then on top of that, you have the Sleeping Beauty story. So there's all these elements that add up. And then uh, we first started talking about it a long, long time ago, seven, eight years ago as an animated film, and then pretty quickly turned it into a live action idea uh, when Angelina Jolie became interested because she's arguably one of the biggest movie stars of our era and brings so much to this role that there really was never anybody else that we could consider for that part. She is that character and loved that character for all the same reasons that you and I do. So you start to add up those elements and you start to see, okay, we have Angie and we have this story, we have this amazing character, we have Robert Stromberg who's this amazing world builder and director who's built worlds for Avatar and Alice in Wonderland. And that starts to sound like something really worth doing in terms of reimagining and retelling this story. And basically, what was the process of like the transition between like she was an animated character to a live action? Like, did you try to keep her as exactly like that character? Did you do some changes? Did you try to update her? Because like the movie was originally made in the 50s. Yeah. Well, you do. You do your research and you try to build a foundation of information so you know what they did in the 50s. And we also look back at the original fairy tale and the. Uh, 17th century and the Grimm brothers wrote a version of it called Briar Rose and so you do your research uh, and then you put that in the back of your mind and and create from a fresh piece of paper and people like Rick Baker the you know multi Oscar winning makeup artist came in just to craft horns and 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 make Angie look like that character and uh, and she did her research as an actress into what would it be like to be a fairy you know I mean I grow from the soil and the same roots as plants and things and how does that feel as a character so everybody really did their homework, and then ultimately you have to throw that out and say, okay, what is our story, and what's a movie that's relevant today? You can't tell a story, you can't tell a Sleeping Beauty story today about a girl who only comes alive when she gets married and has her prince. That's a really lovely 1950s idea, uh, and kind of irrelevant now, thank goodness. So you, you start with a great writer like Linda Wolverton, uh, who came in and recrafted the story, and that's her job. That's our job as filmmakers, is to say, we live today, we're artists today, we're living, breathing artists, and let's make the movie that's relevant to audiences today.